So I thought I'd show you uh, what we did last week, uh, or the last uh, video, part one. This was utilizing just Crayola colored pencils and a uh, fine point black Sharpie marker. So they're like um, common items or things that you could find that are inexpensive. And I think that if you look at some ways that you can um, blend those, you can make some interesting pictures that are fairly good looking and would be uh, make a beautiful card or whatever. So then last night um, I was uh, experimenting with the Crayola markers. So I started doing the markers and um, there isn't a lot to uh, do with these because the green is fairly dark green and the blue is definitely a um, dark blue. Um, purple is like this. So there's no variation in the colors and you can't really build on top of them unless it's the yellow. So for the yellow and the pink, there were possibilities of like re um, applying the, the yellow or the pink marker and you might get some darkness or like this, putting some orange on the inside or the edges as if those petals had um, curled over. And um, that was kind of the shadow uh, or the tips that might change color um, as a petal like, um, I want to say dies, but that sounds awful. <laughs> Matures, how about that? Um, it might change colors a little bit. Um, but we have these, so I did a, a little experimenting with the different colors and then um, I decided, well, what would happen if I combined? So for this project, I started to do those um, colors and then add things, um, other markers, and try and blend them together. So when I did um, the pink, I really couldn't change much. And I have to tell you that I don't know if you could see it, but it did. This is just regular 110 pound cardstock, and it's starting to tear up the surface of the paper. So it's um, rough now where I added more layers. Um, I tried a couple of things to change the colors. Um, and at first I had like yellow on the ends and then I went over it with red. And I can't really say that that helped brighten the color or not. I think it just looks pretty much red. And uh, the same thing here with the orange. I put yellow on the tips just like I did when I did the colored pencil and then went over it with orange and yes it is a little bit lighter brighter on these tips but it's really pretty hard to see so in order to get variation i thought well i'll try the colored pencils and see if i can add uh, anything to this project with the colored pencils that um, are the basic crayola so i did add some red on here um, i did use a little bit of orange over the orange marker there to give more lines and then you can see i added a lot of um, detail line work um, i was like it was just too flat for me and at that point we're looking at like how can we make this um, these petals look more interesting um, or better from far away. And I do really like that technique, so I tried some different things. Yellow marker with the dark green crayon over it, and not the crayon, the colored pencil. Um, layering yellow and green, and then um, coloring that with a green pencil. Um, so I tried a couple of different things. It is much more vibrant, um, much deeper colors. And I was thinking it, it looks really great in a picture. And I also did not go over the word believe with the marker this time because the Sharpie was just too big for these little lines and I couldn't seem to get that um, even. It would have been making it all the same um, width and that would have taken away from this beautiful bee. So this one is just printed. This is just the printed paper in black and white. So as I thought about, um, as I may have said already, thought about, well, what if you're a beginner and you've started with the Crayola colors and now you're like, I really would love some beautiful pinks 
or other colors of green and to try something else. I love the picture on here. This is beautiful and making those water droplets um, is one of my favorite things now to try. Um, so I'm going to do another um, experiment with that and see if I could do it. Um, but I wanted to show you the colors that I could use in this set. Now this set does not, it comes with two blues, three greens, um, the red, and then the purplish color. This one's called um, Dahlia Purple. I know that some uh, kits have like red Dahlia too, so... Um, you can find different things and and this is like a rose pale pink and this is a rose rose this pink um, and orange so you can see that it's not a huge set of colors so what I'm trying to figure out now because this is pomegranate this is a great color and it's a little bit darker what could I do with these colors so I did an experiment after I got them because I just really wanted to try and it wasn't on this picture but I wanted to do um, a fruit in a basket. I'm not totally happy with the basket. Um, it's kind of skewed. Um, I think its composition is a little bit off there. But I thought that the color blending um, came off kind of interesting. This um, this set is really more for um, flowers or whatever. But I thought the textures that I could get were um, colors in the apples. To have an apple have, you know, like yellow and green in it and almost looking a little brownish those lines where it's multicolored um, I thought came out pretty cool and even the um, imperfections or the darker dots you might see on a pair not just the shadow trying to create a shadow but those imperfections on the pear as it ages or um, ripens or whatever so I thought this came out pretty interesting to get this set to make this. And it was using a combination of a lot of colors to make that happen. So, uh, and I had tried different combinations in the leaves to see what else it could do. Um, just dark or adding um, that pomegranate behind things, the purplish color or red color, which red and green will make brown. So, um, so you never know what you could do, and it is kind of fun to experiment. This is actually like a textured paper that's like multimedia or something. So um, I still see some white dots in it, some imperfections. It's kind of cool in the photo. I don't think it um, looks as um, spotty or whatever as it does to me, grainy. Um, so I'm thinking maybe it just looks like texture to you. I don't know, but um, that's not my fondest thing. But to try these out, these pencils are much softer. The Prismacolors are much softer. Um, so you need to use a little bit of a different technique and to definitely um, not press really hard because you are going to um, burnish the paper easier. Uh, you're gonna get more color put down faster which is also a nice thing. And because my hands do hurt from coloring, um, both of my wrists have been broken before uh, and I was in a car accident, so my uh, wrists are injured. And for me, after coloring for a while, my hand starts to hurt. So um, I was thinking like, I'm hoping that this will help with that. Although there are some things that I really like about those Crayola pencils. So let's see what we can do with this picture now that um, is the other half. So we did Crayola here and now we're going to do um, this set and I'm going to see if I can get um, beautiful dimension and colors and blending on this other um, page and um, compare them, see which one we like better. I'll be right back. So I was going to show you that I did start um, the other half of the paper with uh, these Prisma colors, and I didn't. I did sharpen some of them. It came with a um, pretty short uh, pencil sharpening. If you could see that, it's not a very long, skinny point. It is pointed, but I have to tell you that I really do like having a longer point on them. 
So you can probably see which ones I actually used because they were resharpened. The thing I didn't like about them is it seemed kind of hard um, to sharpen them. Um, I had one break, but besides that, it just looks really rough, like the wood was hard, hard to sharpen. So what I did was I layered uh, a number of these colors, and I wanted to show you um, how well they actually um, blended. I wanted to show you how this um, blended together, and to try and get some variation, you can see um, that I this is what I started with. So I did one coat of the uh, pink, the brighter pink. So that would be this one, which just says pink, or rosé in Spanish, I suppose. I don't know if it's in French or what, but I kept calling them uh, the other name. So the pomegranate is Granada. <laughs> um, so I did that, and I was going to show you what was going to happen, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit to... Um, to see what maybe there I zoomed in a little bit more and um, so I had that inside and uh, I noticed with the other ones that I wanted more veins so I'm gonna give it a few more longer pieces with the pointier sharper side and we'll see if we can get some of the veins in um, in the picture to show up like detail um, as I would go over this it seemed like um, if I blended that really well on the inside of the petal to be darker um, it just all kind of smoothed out into one color which is great when you want to blend it but to give some kind of veins to those flowers some detail like I was doing with the marker in the other one I needed to add a little more um, layers of pencil here and I did it with those lines. So if you pressed harder and you have a uh, sharp edge, if you could see that there, a sharp edge on your pencil, um, you'll be able to get a little veining. So you could see that this, without a lot of pressure, is really blending in three to four applications. And one of the artists that I often watch and learn from is Christy Partridge and um, she's always saying or even Lisa from Lock Refine Art they're always saying like you need six to eight applications you know and I'm like what I don't even believe you could do that but I have tried and you can so let's say I wanted to add um, a little more of this pomegranate to this I can still make lines on top of it and give it more detail and not blend those and um, you'll see them here so what if I wanted to put like a little shadow there um, I did an experiment on my color page so I wanted to show you that I did this experiment and tried to see if I went around the edges I tried two different colors the purple didn't show so I tried the red around this one um, to see if I could get the edges to show up and I have to tell you that I still think that while this does have um, better shading, I would like to do that to these, give a little more color around the edges. I still like putting the black ink on it, <laughs> going over it with the marker. So I don't know if you can see that really well, but the, um, cause it's kind of shiny now with the burnishing, but I think that it, uh, gives much more definition, makes the picture better than just the shading, just the shading without those black lines in it. So I, I think that I'm still kind of stuck with the style that I like, but it's kind of up to you what you would like to do and your picture. And for this style, it is more like a um, line drawing. So that's the style that this is in. All right, so um, you can see on this one, I did the purple on the inside, and then we have our blue. So we have the Dahlia purple and the non-photo blue, it's called. This is like one of my favorite colors of blue. Seriously, I like it. I suppose it is sort of a sky blue, but not exactly. 
and um, I wanted to show you that. So I had one application there, and then I went over this very lightly with my blue, and even went over the purple a little bit to try and blend it out. Then I went back in and did another layer of purple to see if I could get, you know, a more solid, smooth color there. So now I'm gonna try doing those veins, pressing harder and putting some lines in and maybe a little texture on the sides. And um, we'll see what happens when we go back in and blend again. Cause I'm still thinking like with the other one, I would rather have the, um, doing the lines final and not shading or blending after that. But that does give a little more dimension by putting a little purple on the edge here. It does give more dimension to um, that, more interest to the um, petal. So we're gonna try this one again. I'm trying to color gently. I always do that. I keep going over it a second time. It's just like part of my training, I guess. I don't know. Or my instinct. What do I want to say? So I'm doing a couple lines. And then I'll do a little, like, um, shadow there. Maybe one on this side, as if the petal is getting a little more shadow. So I pressed harder. And now I'm going to um, color that again. So do another, uh, hopefully, maybe two coats of this blue. And then we'll have like five, if I'm counting right. And I shouldn't see too much of the white paper coming through. I'm trying to blend this more. And um, I think that's pretty good. So you can see that one looks a little different than this one now because I put some purple on the edges. I still say I like that one better, but okay. So I'm going to give a little more texture to this one and go over it one more time and see if we can get a little more um, dimension by doing this color on the edge. To give it more interest here. Um, I think that that gives us a little bit of a more interesting or um, natural looking, even though we're doing this with markers and pencils, um, natural looking flower there. And like I had said before, you can um, erase pencil if you go over the edge. It won't pull it all up, but it'll um, distract from it a little bit. And I have to tell you that this is the Tombow eraser. And I got the um, rectangular one and um, I don't know if that would be better than the uh, round pinpointed one, but uh, I'm trying this out and it does really work well, better than the push pencil eraser. So I'm gonna go over the edges on this one and get a light layer of the blue. And then I'm gonna do another, um, light coloring of the purple here and a little more of lines going up shadows on the side maybe like that and now i'll do another layer of blue over the whole area I'm trying to fill in like the dots, even in the purple. If there's white showing, I'm trying to blend that in. I feel like this flower looks even a lot darker, but um, keep in mind that that would be like the shadow. This is higher up maybe in that um, placement of those. Okay, that was our try. Um, I have to say that I still think that I like this one the best. Um, 
I suppose I would give it a little more detail of the purple in here in places just to give it a little more interest and I like that a little better just having a little bit of that and I'm gonna erase my my blue that I got over the edge there so we're gonna quit on that one and then I was gonna tell you that since this uh, does not have a regular true red I'll show you the Crayola red um, you can see the difference in those two colors I think the Prisma color is a little bit darker and you almost can't tell in the pencil but when you look at the two color swatches here this one looks sort of purple and this one looks very red even though it's not covering all of the white of the paper where the pomegranate obviously will do that um, the more layers you put on the red was not quite doing that on the Crayola so when I went to do um, the little hearts here um, this was coming out like a very dark red purple so I took my orange to make it a little more of an orangier red and then it looked more like a true red to me um, so I thought that was kind of cool because I could balance that out and um, it worked so um, I'm going to color some more of the leaves and the flowers and I'll come back to show you um, what I did next. I did try this one with the um, orange uh, to make this red and I did that same concept with um, coloring with this pomegranate and um, to make my red just like the hearts I did the red here not covering too much of that orange at the top and then went over the red again with the orange and lightly colored it and now we're starting to look a little more um, red on there again and now I'm going to go back over it with the pomegranate going over the orange to the tips and oops I went outside of my flower sometimes it's hard to do this on camera Okay, and then I went over it with orange to hopefully burnish it out. So you can see that with um, two layers of each color, I'm getting a much deeper red. And with this one, I did it lighter. I didn't cover the tips. So you can see the difference of um, the colors in the red that you can achieve with um, blending them with those two colors. I still really like the the orangey tips the most but that one is hanging down so um, we could say that that one is probably a little more shadowed so if it was in the shadow more it would look darker um, so I'll be back in a few to talk about the yellow flowers and the butterfly and I'll have a lot more leaves done So I've done some more of the coloring and um, we're going to try and finish this up. I wanted to show you some of the things that I did with the uh, greens, with the leaves and how you could make the different colors. So you can see with our orange, our yellow flower here, orange and yellow flower, um, we could put a little shading here to give it some dimension. And I'm not going to do it real lot. And I'm not going to put like veins in, but I'm sort of gently um, coloring some orange in there. And then I'm going to go back over it with the yellow. And you'll see this brilliant yellow now. Now, to finish this flower, I'm trying to make sure I got all the white. finish this flower we have one more leaf that I didn't do and you can see that there's maybe you can maybe you can't see that there's more than uh, one color here so what I did was I um, left this middle open and I put in the shadows with the regular darker green so this is like grass green and this is spring green which has to be one of my favorite colors by the way 
Um, I really like that bright green. And then I just mixed them together, blended them. Um, so it's a little darker there. Now you could go back in with um, that green again, just kind of close to the petals to give it a, a little bit of a, a darker shadow there. And then that one's done. So then we have this, this other yellow flower to finish. Um, we're going to put in a little bit of orange here. And, um, and then we're going to go back over it with yellow. And I'm not really like shading as much as making those um, textured lines in, uh, in the thought of that um, the flower has veins of different colors in it. And now I'm just coloring back over it again with the yellow and I'm not going to do another orange because I kind of want that to recess. Um, I'm having that blend in and sort of disappear in a way so it's not standing out as a separate color but more of a yellow orange there blended together and I pretty much like that. So that was how I did those leaves. I wanted to show you on these leaves, I wanted a little bit of a different color green. If you look at this one, it is just this grass green on there. But if you look at these, they're a little bit different of a color. So what I did was I took my olive green as the base coat, and then I went over it with the grass green. So now it changed the tone of it a little bit more. And these, um, I remember for the ones that we did over here, we put some blue underneath and then covered it with green. Well, for these, I didn't have a dark blue like we used before. So what I took was my blue slate, which has a grayer undertone. It's not as bright as the other blue. And my olive color, which is a darker toned color, more neutral color. And I put um, that over it. And then I did go over it again with the blue slate to try and blend it out. And um, that was all I did. I didn't do another coat of olive green. For these other ones, you can probably guess that those were yellow first on the top half and then this um, spring green on the bottom half, I did the same thing. This one, I left the yellow at the top. I didn't go over it with the green. And these, I went over the tips of it that were yellow with the green. So that's kind of done. Now for this one, I used the um, pomegranate color, which I think matches very well here. Um, we're going to try this pomegranate one with the pink. And you can see that blending it together, it does change that. And now we're going to go back over with our darker pink that we have here, not the gray tone and uh, make a couple passes on that. And you'll see that this really blends well together. We don't have, oops, I just went out of the line again. We don't have the, um, the vein look or anything. If we wanted to do that, we would need to go back over that again, um, like I said, and really put those on as um, our final layer, I think, uh, so that it shows up very well. So um, we could go over that again with the red. This pomegranate, oh, that's the wrong red. That was Crayola. No wonder it looked different. Okay, here we go. It blended too well. That was the Crayola pencil. Now I don't have a perfect, <laughs> a perfect experiment I messed up. Okay, so here we go. Um, we did the pomegranate now. Boy, that red really blended well with this. And uh, you can see we almost push up the pomegranate into the pink there. So um, that looks pretty cool. At, that is our finish. So we're going to draw a couple of um, veins with the pointy part um, and press a little harder so you get some veins on that. We might even put a little bit of a shadow on some of these so that they have a little bit of um, depth to them instead of just the black marker. So I'm providing a little more shadow more dimension okay 
Um, for this bottom leaf, if you remember, for this one we put brown in, but I don't have brown. So back to the pomegranate because the uh, red and green make brown. I put a little pomegranate in there, and then I took the regular green and went over it. So I'm doing this one like, uh, oh, I just went out again. So um, I'm covering that up. I'm going to finish this one the same way with another coat of green and um, I'm glad this is practice, although the pictures re look really cool. Um, so we've got these flowers done. We have our yellow flowers done, the blue ones, those. Oh, so our final little ones here. With this one, we put purple and then we had white to go over it with white to make it a little bit lighter. Now we're going to take, um, we had this, the same idea with this um, slate blue. Uh, I put that down underneath, and then I took my Dahlia Purple and went over it with one coat. And then I went back over it with the slate, with the blue slate. I had to look at it again, which kind of toned it down that color. All right, so in those... The uh, centers I just made orange last time, so we're going to put a dot, a dot of orange there. Helps if your pencil is sharp, and I've been trying to practice in this one with turning my um, pencil as I'm coloring, so I get more of that, um, keep that point without having to sharpen as much, and I do think it is sort of working. So um, that's pretty cool. I thought there was one more thing that... I needed to um, color. So mainly the last part is my favorite part and that is um, putting in some details like I said with the Sharpie. If we finished coloring everything um, I really like putting in those lines. I'm not being very careful here. I should go slower um, to do that but if you pick up the pen a little bit as you go out, you get um, less of a, you get more of a light stroke at the end, it kind of fades more. So you want to try to do that. I do think that it's, I have a harder time, I don't know if it's going outward, pulling back, <clears throat> or um, not, but I am going to put some of this and to give my um, flowers a little more shade and detail like the other one. I'm going to put a little more on the bottom there. And then I'm going to take my marker. The wax sometimes coats the... Um, so you don't want to press down too much because it will um, coat your marker and ruin the marker. So I did some of that. Sometimes I make a little more of a... A dark center there to give it a little more contrast with a little squiggle on the bottom um, so we're getting close to um, finished with this project I think having a little more of a squiggle on the bottom texture there gives it a little more uh, of a grounding and um, makes the flower pop out even more. Um, we did have those lines in there. They did kind of disappear more with, um, with the Prismacolors. Um, so I feel like you'd have to go back over it with uh, a marker again. So while we had um, some texture here, I really liked going back to the marker one where I put a lot of those lines and texture and dark spots. That contrast really made the flower pop. So um, I would really like that. So I just like, just in the parts where there's like a little V, sometimes I'll put that squiggle like um, it's a shadow and that really makes it stand out. So that would take a little more time. Um, but I would do that too. 
along with these where um, I did my circle again so that would stand out because the pencil covered the black line black marker um, I would do that and sometimes I just scribble up and down so um, and then I wipe off my marker so you could see that um, it's not they're not all the same that would be better to not have them all the same uh, at least all the flowers that you're working with on here we're doing some detail but not to have everything have the same detail so you can see the difference between this one and this one so um, I want to say that's about it for that unless you wanted to put in a little line on the leaves like the vein of the leaves you could do that too sometimes it's nice just to leave it at the bottom not at the top we're pretty much with the same thing on those and we do have a line in there so those are fine um, I think that this is pretty good so I wanted to show you how you can do full calligraphy with um, the word joy so that's what I did for here so you can see this one when I traced over the believe the believe that's printed um, from the font in publisher is beautiful and crisp and everything and it looks great but I wanted this to be like all made by me when I traced over this one I could not trace over it and color it in um, being the light gray when we did it in grayscale so this one I wanted to show you how I wrote joy and this one is a little bit different than this Y um, that I did there but I wanted to show you how I did it so I just tried to guess how much space I would need to um, fit the word joy in so that it was um, a good composition and of course this one I did larger so you could see what I was doing so I'm gonna like show you all I did was that and a circle and I tried to like be um, slow and deliberate to get my word did you see that or was that off camera okay I'm gonna try over here um, just to make your J practice and then I put the O kind of under it because I thought that would look cool to be in that position and then the Y and just circle around I did take calligraphy before but if you just practice your your cursive and um, try to be deliberate and smooth um, you'll get it so what I did here was I just drew these lines down and then I filled them in so I can show you right here this one I kind of curved a little bit because if you used a calligraphy pen it would probably curve a bit and um, <coughs> you can see that there so this one's a lot shorter so it's harder to tell but you just make those lines um, try to keep them as consistent as you can uh, with the other stuff and uh, this time I'm going on the outside because I think that would fit better with the way I did my Y it had kind of a point so then all you do is <clears throat> try to go slowly um, inside of that line so remember when you draw your lines and your words you don't want to stop if you hesitate you're gonna create a point or a um, dot of color because it's gonna the ink is gonna sink in <clears throat> to the paper so um, here we go I'm gonna try and fix that little bit but um, I'm just sort of sketching in to try and stay inside that line and just did that not perfect but that's okay you get the idea and then this one too that's all I did so depending on how far over you did it you would need to take that into consideration um, how big of a hook you have for the color to go that way so if you did calligraphy before 
Um, you can buy markers that have the angle. You have the angle of the pen. It's flat. Um, it's a flat point on it, and you want it to be like flat going this way, and you keep your hand in the same position. So when it comes over here, you're doing the skinny part of the marker, the skinny line, not the fat one. So um, this is uh, a way to trick it without getting out my calligraphy pens, and I'm still just using the fine point Sharpie. So um, you get to see that you can do this with even a Sharpie or a pen, although I did write with one of the pens that I like and I'm still back to. It's better to have a gel pen. I was gonna do some ink drawings and see if I could find an ink pen that was just in my drawer that I liked. <laughs> and that's actually harder than you think. You don't want a pen that's gonna like um, leak and leave spots in it. And then the other thing I was gonna show you for um, this, I don't know if you can see it, I can see it, but uh, when I went to wipe the um, crumbs, I wanna say from coloring, I when I wiped them, it kinda smeared on my paper. And part of that reason was because um, I was gonna use a paper to cover it because you wanna make sure that you don't get it on your hand or smear the colors or whatever when you're working on it. But I was trying to compare the bottom um, to the top and uh, that was not <laughs> gonna happen if I covered it so my uh, so some flaws but this is still practice remember so um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to vote do you like the Crayola pencils the Prismacolor pencils or <clears throat> the Crayola markers and colored pencils together. So put it in the comments. Let me know um, what you think or your favorite thing. Um, and I'd really appreciate it. And we'll be back again for the next part of this series to compare these colors and um, see how Prismacolor can maybe do a rose with, uh, with watermarks. Oh, you could see the light in there. Okay, so the watermarks. Um, we're going to try to have little um, spots of dew or rain um, water bubbles there and talk about how to do those because that's one of my favorite things. So we'll see how that one comes out um, as maybe you color with me, okay? So next time we're also going to do Prismacolor and um, Gamsol. And then we have our last episode with... Um, using uh, the wax, wax, not wax, petroleum jelly and the professional Gamsol uh, mineral spirits um, to test those on which one of those would work better on a Prismacolor or a Crayola. I don't even know if they work on a Crayola, so we'll find out in the, in the last part. All right, so I will see you next time. Um, and enjoy coloring practice. Hey, don't forget, like and subscribe. It will really help my channel.